Damon Runyon Theater. Once again, the Damon Runyon Theater brings you another story by the master storyteller, Damon Runyon. And this one, Barbecue. And to tell it to you, here is Broadway. Thanks. Well, one afternoon, I am in Miami, Florida, being down there for the race meet. I am enjoying some seafood in the little sharkskin grill when I am joined by a citizen named High C. Homer, so-called because he tries out as a singer one time in an amateur contest, but his career does not go on from there because someone catches him under the chin with a cabbage, and Homer turns to other hobbies, mostly more than somewhat off the level. Well, we talk of this and that until Homer looks toward the door and says, Broadway, I wonder why it is that I cannot go any place without a copper sticking in his face. Copper? Where? Coming over. And this one's name is Finnegan, and he is rough on the edges. Homer, what do you do that brings him to see you? Nothing, I think. Well, well, hello there, Homer. Hello, Finnegan. Sit down. I'll say this standing up. Homer, the chief will consider it a favor if you'll bid us farewell. Why? What is his idea? He doesn't have to have one. Just goodbye, Homer. I do nothing. Maybe not. But somebody touched up a guest in this town for 50 grand. My goodness, that is a lot of scratch. It is. And what makes you and the chief think I have anything to do with it? Just the fact you're in town makes us believe anything. Homer, start now. Okay, okay. And you? You. Huh? Me? You are talking to me? Yeah. Go with Homer. But but I do nothing. I only know Homer. That could be a crime. And is. Both of you, please leave Miami right now. So that is how I leave Miami, somewhat under a cloud. Homer has a car and offers to drive me to Tampa. I accept. <laughs> I wish later I do not, because what happens is bad for me. And what it is, I will tell you in a minute. Now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, Barbecue. Well, not more than an hour later, I and Homer are driving along the Tamiami Trail to Tampa. Homer is a little cross because, as he says, I do not mind taking a rap for something I do. But when I am asked to leave town because I do nothing, I feel very You do. How about me? Somebody swims a guy out of 50 grand. Broadway, that is a lot of humor. It is a hand of some to have it outside. I wonder who pulled the touch. Tell me I do not hear anything of it. You are sure you have nothing to do with it? Me? Broadway, there is no handhold on a crooked dollar. Eh, what business are you in, Homer? Legitimate. Since when? Broadway, what is the matter with you? Everything. Just because I am sitting in the grill and you join me, I have got to leave Miami, which I like very much. Mm, looks like a storm is coming up. And there is no top on this thing. Mm, looks like this is going to be quite a storm. Look, Homer, I am out in the middle of no place because you talk to me in Miami. Let us at least get someplace where there is a roof over our heads. Mm-hmm. I think I know just the place, Broadway. It is up the trail, maybe two miles. Then hurry up. <laughs> Hurry up! It is starting to rain. I can feel it. Homer, get to the place you talk about before only my head shows above water. With that, Homer coaxes a couple more spurts out of the old pail, and in a few minutes we are walking into one of them roadside places that sell sandwiches and things like that. It is no fancy joint, but Homer seems very pleased, especially when he looks around and spots a doll who is maybe shading 40, 
and is put together on the lines of a middleweight. He motions me to come with him, and we walk over to the doll, and Homer speaks to her. Hello, Barbecue. Hello, you sir. <gasps> Homer. Yeah. How are you? Until this second, I was all right. What are you doing here? Big wind outside. Now there's one inside. You are not glad to see me? No. Get out of here. Look, there is an awful storm coming up, Barbecue. So what? <laughs> what line of larceny are you in this season? I am now as honest as the day is long. Ah, never asked you to come here. Do you still hold it against me that I gave you that horse five years ago? It was not a horse. It was a catfish, and it should have been thrown back before they put a saddle on it. Barbecue, you are holding a grudge. Grudge? It wasn't the horse, Homer. It's just that you... you'll never straighten out. I don't want to see you. Well, how about the storm outside? It'll do you good. But my friend here... Any friend of yours deserves a good storm. Oh, now, wait a minute, miss. It is not my fault Homer drags me in here. It is not my fault that I am with him. The cop's in Miami. Oh, I see. They tossed you out, huh, Homer? Well... And me with him, for no reason at all. Your word I'll take. His, no. But... Well... Okay. As soon as the storm blows over, get. I know you would see things my way. Mm, sure. But, Homer? What? Don't... Don't try talking me into anything. Like what? Like... Like talking me into anything. Okay, Barbecue. I will not. Come on, Broadway. Let us sit down. Say, who is this Kamapo who talks to you in such a discourteous manner? She is no Kamapo. In fact, I think she is quite handsome. What? Handsome? You have to stand at an awful good angle, of which there is none. Broadway, it is because you do not know any better that you speak that way of my wife. Wife? You? My ever-loving wife. She divorces me nine years ago. Then how can she be your ever-loving wife? I consider her such because I still love her. But... She has nothing to do with me because she does not approve of my way of making a few bobs here and there. This I understand. Every time I see her, I love her more. Broadway, someday I will get her back. With that, Homer goes to gazing at barbecue. And she gives him a look now and then, too. It is easy to see that she is not over him. Homer also tells me that she owns this barbecue place and does very nicely with it. Well, there we sit. And it is maybe 20 minutes later that the door opens and in walk two hard-looking guys. Homer gives them the eye and then says to me... Looks like we have got some company, Broadway. Yeah. And from the looks of those two, they are company I can do without. Uh-huh. Know who they are? They look familiar. They should. The little guy is dandy Jack McQueen. Sure, that's who it is. Holy mackerel, what is he doing here? And the big guy is Johnny Aquitania, out of St. Louis. Homer, I do not like this. We gotta get out of here. Why? Why? Do you not see the valise dandy Jack carries? Sure. It seems to me that in that valise is the 50 grand they take from that guy in Miami. And those two are on their way to Tampa. But get blown in here like you and me. Let us blow out. Not in this storm. I would rather face the storm. Sit tight. Fifty grand is a lot of talk. Guy could go straight on that much. Homer, what are you thinking? <laughs> Nothing, I... Hey, Johnny Aquitania is coming over. Yeah. You. Don't I see you someplace before... I guess you do, Johnny. You know me, huh? I guess I do, Johnny. And who are you? Me? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I, I am a friend of Homer's. Homer? Oh, sure. I see Homer. <laughs> I thought I knew you. Yeah, you know me. Say, what are you doing here? Same thing you are. How do you mean that? Getting in out of the rain. Oh. I notice you're looking at us hard when we came in. Don't do it anymore. There's a law against it? Could be, Homer. Could be. Um, I see you are traveling light. Just a little suitcase. Just a little suitcase. That's right. Just a toothbrush. Uh-huh. 
Well, it's nice seeing you, Johnny. Keep it that way. Nice, I mean. Homer, you are crazy talking to a tough guy like that. He is a very rapid citizen in every way, shape, or form. Homer Storm or no storm, I am gone. Okay, you go. But how? Well, I... I... You know there is no way for me to get out except in your car. I do not intend to leave just yet. How long will you stay? Until I do two things. Which are? Number one, convince Barbecue that I am or will be an ideal and ever-loving husband. And number two? Figure out some way to get myself a steak. I am entirely out of potatoes. And you are looking hard at that little valise. Am I? Homer, I see a lot of guys do crazy things. But if you are thinking of trying to do what I know you are, then you are one, two, the craziest guy in the world. <laughs> I am? Look, Johnny Aquitania and Dandy Jack are not small kindergarten children. They are grown-up killers. Sure. But look at it this way, Broadway. A guy can sure go straight on 50 grand. <laughs> hooked, and I know it. Outside, there is a storm that sounds like it is blowing the state right off at the map. And inside, there are two guys with 50 grand that they will resent anybody trying to pick off. Then there is High C. Homer, who feels that he has the 50 grand coming to him. Take those things, and what have you got? Trouble. Then add what comes later, and you get more trouble, as you will hear in a minute. Now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, Barbecue. The storm outside gets worse, and things inside get more than somewhat tighter. Johnny and Dandy Jack keep getting more nervous. In fact, they are almost up with me in that respect. Then, Dandy Jack gets up and goes out the door. Now, where do you think Dandy Jack is going, Broadway? I do not know, and I do not care, as long as he stays away. Mm, this is very peculiar. <sighs> that sounds like we just landed in the ocean. It's like we're in for a good one. I guess so, Barbecue. I don't like the looks of those two guys. Do not worry about them. Worry about me. Why? Look, I think that you and me can get back together again, huh? Oh, I told you not to try to talk me into anything. Oh, I'm not. But you know I still love you. Oh, shut up. That's Broadway. Broadway, do I not tell you that before? Well, you do, but see? Why did you have to come back here? You're no good, Homer. You never were and you never will be. Maybe I turn over a new leaf. And I'll bet there was a crooked job underneath. You wrong me. Broadway. Do I not talk about going straight just a minute ago? Well, yes, I, I guess you do, but... See, Barbecue? If I thought you meant that, I... I do. I've said it a thousand times, and I always end up the same. Holding the sack while you're keeping a jump ahead of the cops. No. You're just no good. Look, if I go straight for a whole year, what then? A whole year? Yeah. You couldn't do it. Want to bet? No. Listen... I will make you this proposition. I will go straight for a whole year if you will take me back at the end of that time. What have you got up your crooked sleeve? Nothing. I could kill you for coming back here. We will talk about that later. Right now, is it a deal? <laughs> when bigger dopes are made, they'll use me for a model. What does that mean? I'm a sap. I fall for this line every time. But... You never hear me say before that I will go straight for a whole year. No, that's something new. All right, Homer, but so help me. If you break this promise, if I hear one little thing about you that ain't on the level, don't ever let me see you again. Because if you do, I'll turn you in myself if I have to frame you. Understand? Sure, I get it. Now, you talk to Broadway a minute. I got some business with one of your customers. Oh, what are you going to do? Take it easy. I am just going to talk. 
Well, I'm a sap, huh, Broadway? I guess you have lots of company. I guess so. Excuse me, Barbecue. It is none of my business, but why do you let Homer talk you into this? And I got news for you. I knew as soon as I saw him that I'd take that bait again. Oh, I see. I guess maybe you are lonesome, huh? Maybe. Even for him. Yeah, I think I understand. Well, more customers from the storm. Hey, that blonde is a beautiful doll. Can't say much for the guy with her. Yeah. Excuse me, I'll see if they want anything. We'll have a little talk later, Barbecue. Yeah. Well, Homer? That Johnny Aquitania is a tough person. Yeah, he is. I think I tell you that. Uh Uh-huh. But you hear the promise I make Barbecue. I do. To go straight. And if lifting that 50 grand from those two citizens is going straight, then you have peculiar ideas. They do not come by it honestly. They pinch it from that character in Miami. Like I always say, there is no handful on a crooked dollar. So we sit there with the storm getting worse all the time. The new customers that come in are a young guy and a young doll who look like they are very scared about something. Then Dandy Jack comes back in, knocks the guy at the thing. Homer sees him and gives me a funny look and then motions for me to go outside with him. We do so. And I think it is very funny that Johnny and Dandy let us go until Homer goes to his car where the scene is as follows. Like I think. Dandy Jack fixes my car so I cannot drive it. No wonder they let us come outside. Oh, but this is getting worse all the time. I guess it is. Maybe we should fix their car. Oh, but do not be a sap. If you do that, then they will know who it is, and you will be cooked. And I will be cooked. Yeah, I guess you are right. Look, there's another car. It must belong to that young guy that comes in with the doll. Let's take a look at it. I think they have a very good reason. Look. Where? Over there. When we get here, I see the telephone lines. Now look at them. They are cut. Johnny and Dandy are taking no chances. I guess we better go back in. Wait a minute. Listen. Hmm? That sounds like... like somebody. It is coming from this car. Yeah, it is. But there is nothing in this car but a bullpen and a case. Let me see. Yeah. This is very funny. Homer. Homer, look. Do you see what I see? Well, how do you like this? That is a finger sticking out of that boot to the face. There's a body in that case. Homer, I will be glad if you tell me this whole thing is a bad dream. Stop me the day I meet you for the first time. Come on. Let's see who this is. Give me a hand. I wish nothing to do with bodies. The finger is wiggling. Come. We cannot leave a citizen in that thing. I do not know him. I do not wish to know him. If he is in a bull fiddle case, that is his business. It might be a hobby with him. Broadway. Give me a hand. There is nothing else to it but that we take the citizen out of the case. It turns out that he is a little old guy with a lump on his head the size of a watermelon. I and Homer take him back into the kitchen without going through the dining room. And there, the old guy starts to talk. Thank you. Oh, thank you, gentlemen. I would have died in there. Will you please explain this hiding in a bull fiddle case? It is not dignified for a party of your years. I... I was put in there. They did it. My wife and that... and that Giuliano. Uh, is your ever-loving wife a beautiful blonde doll? Yes. And this Giuliano, is he a dark guy with a mustache? Yes, Where are they? Inside, in the dining room. (laughs) They're going to be surprised when they find I'm still alive. They tried to kill me. Oh, then they put you in the case. Yes, they... They were going to throw me into the swamp. It seems to me that people are getting a little out of line these days. Well, you are a lucky man that we find you, Mr... Uh... My name is Grievance. Grievance. What are you going to do, Mr. Grievance? Do? Well, it seems to me that you have a pretty good case against your wife and this Giuliano. Yes, but I want them to think I am dead. Let them throw that case into the swamp. Without you in it? If you think I'm going to get back in there, you're crazy. You've got a point there. 
As soon as I can, I will get in touch with the police and have my wife and Giuliano picked up. Then I will prefer charges. Of course. But wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny? Look, those pigs hanging there. Barbecue raises them and butchers them herself. Now, what if we took one of those pigs and put it in the case? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Very good idea. Excellent. <laughs> Nobody's here but the cook, so you hide out here until your wife and Juliana leave. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. They'll throw the pig into the swamp thinking it's me. <laughs> but why are you willing to help me? I always like a good joke. Now, you hide out and I will put a pig in the bull fiddle case. So we do that. Grievance hides out in the kitchen, and Homer and me go back into the dining room. Johnny Aquitania is waiting for us. Where you been? Outside for some air. Anybody else come? No. Give me it on the level. Take a look for yourself. Nobody could get through to here in this storm, and nobody can get out. That's right, nobody gets out. What have you been doing out there so long? We need a lot of air. Yeah, okay. Now, you two sit right here. And don't talk to anybody about anything. Get it? Sure. I get it, Johnny. Far be it for me to queer a deal for... for a friend. That's a real good boy, Homer. Oh! The lights! The lights! The lights. The lights. Well, don't worry, oh, This lights. happens a lot of times. The lights go out during a storm. They'll come on again just as soon as the storm's over. Uh -huh. Oh, Homer, oh, Bobby. Listen to that wind. I've been here a long time, but I never heard one like this. Uh, we're in for it, huh? Yeah, a real bad one. Why do I ever come here? You got any candles or lamps? Oh, yeah, I'll get some. What is that? The wind blew down a tree. Hey, that comes pretty close. I'm getting out of here. This joint slab will fold up any second. Where are you going, Johnny? You do not have a one-two chance out there. I don't care. We're getting out. Dandy, come on. This way, we're getting out. You're crazy, mister. The wind will blow you off the road. How many trees are there, Barbecue? Plenty. That does it. At least we got a chance out there in the road. We're trapped in this joint. Come on, Danny. Come on. We're getting out of here. I hate to see them leave, especially now. Personally, I am happy. <laughs> there they go, Broadway. What's the tie-in between them and you, Homer? Nothing. Nothing at all, Barbecue. I just feel sad... Maybe Dandy Jack and Johnny Aquitania run into an accident. Yeah, I think so, too. Well, like I always say, there is no handhold on a crooked dollar. But nobody goes outside to see what happens. We stay inside with the storm howling like a million devils. I see that Homer is aching to go out, but he will not take the chance. Then it comes on morning and the storm is gone. I and Homer sneak outside while Barbecue is busy someplace else. Just look at them, Broadway. They are deader than last week's tip on the horse. I think they are. But here is a little valise. It is not even scratched. What are you going to do with that? Go straight. I am going to South America and live straight. Then I will come back in a year and... Hey, look. They go the blonde doll and that Giuliano. <laughs> With the pig in that bull fiddle case. Well, all is well that ends well. You think this thing is ended? What else? If you are caught with that money... Who will catch me? Nobody. Broadway, I think this is the greatest thing that ever happens to me. We will go back to Miami. Miami? But you know you cannot go back there. But I will. I figure this way. The cops are looking for Dandy Jack and Johnny Aquitania to go north. Now, if I go south, back to Miami, I will be as safe as wheat in the bin. So says High Sea Homer. But I am right. It is not the end. And what happens when we get back to Miami is something I will tell you in a minute. Well, 
Homer says goodbye to Barbie. She is crying a little and makes Homer swear that he will go straight for a year. Then we get the car fixed and drive to Miami. We stop at the shark skin grill, and there the scene is as follows. So I have got 50 grand and barbecue. If you are caught with that toy, it will go hard with you. Nobody suspects I have it. Nobody can. From here, I will catch a plane to South America. Uh, 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 maybe you better look toward the door. That looks like Finnegan coming in. So? What does he have on me? Nothing. Just let me talk. Gladly. Well, well, well. I see Homer. I think I told you we don't want you in Miami. I remember. But if you will remember, there is a storm yesterday. It drives me back here. I will leave in a little while, Finnegan. I don't think you will. In fact, you'll stay with us for a spell. Huh? What is this? A pinch, Homer, a pinch. Now, wait a minute. You got nothing on me, nothing. I got a warrant for your arrest, that's all. Come on. My arrest? Look, Finnegan, there is nothing to pin on me. I have nothing to do with that heist job. Nothing. I'm going. Oh, no, you just get your hands off me. Finnegan, scary. get out of my way. The police. Home with the police. It comes open. Holy smoke, look at that door. It is not mine. I never see it before. Finnegan, oh, I... Oh, sure, you never saw it before. All right, Homer, let's go. You do not know I have it. Nobody knows I have it. That's right. I had no idea you were in on that job, but now... What? You... You have no idea. Right. A little while ago, we get a call from a dame named Barbecue who runs a stand at the trail. Barbecue? Barbecue? What does she have to do with this? She was awful mad when she talked to us, and she was crying. Mr. Finnegan, what... What does she tell you? She swore out a warrant for you, Homer. Said that she has the eyewitness testimony of her cook that you stole a pig from her kitchen. And so ends the famous Damon Runyon story, Barbecue. Listen in again next week for... The Damon Runyon Theater. The Damon Runyon Theater with John Brown as Broadway is directed by Richard Sandville and the stories adapted for radio by Russell Hughes. Vern Carstensen is in charge of production. This is a Mayfair production. (laughs) 